And welcome back to Good Day, Sin Mom. Here to shed some light on a new proposal from the Rapids Parish School Board is Jeff Powell, Rapids Parish Superintendent. Jeff, thanks for joining us on the show today. Oh, thanks for letting me be here, Natalie. I appreciate it. Of course, of yeah. course. Well, uh, you know, something was added to the uh, board agenda for mm -hmm. the monthly meeting uh, tomorrow. It was added last week, um, and that's kind of when people found out about this. So for mm -hmm. those who may not be aware, Give us a brief overview on this proposal. Yeah, so uh, the proposal that everybody's talking about right now is our Better Facilities Strategic Plan. That uh, what our board has done and, and what we do as administration is we're continuously evaluating the resources that we have throughout our school system, including our facilities, uh, that will provide the best opportunity for us to meet our academic goals and our operational goals. And so the proposal itself um, is one that would uh, consider uh, taking Rapids Academy and Phoenix Magnet, our two academic magnet schools or, or programs in the parish and joining them with a newly formed uh, K, uh, 912 uh, academic and performing arts magnet located at Bolton High School. So basically picking up Phoenix and picking up Rapids Academy and setting them on the Bolton campus to have a comprehensive K through 12 academic and performing arts magnet. We just strongly believe that the students of Rapids Parish deserve an opportunity to have a comprehensive K through 12 feeder system that ultimately has the goal of having more students uh, be able to access college level coursework at the high school level and, and be able to create this natural feeder there. It, in the proposal is also to uh, combine some other elementary schools here within the city of Alexandria. Uh, we still have a, a facilities issue here within the city of Alexandria where we have uh, more facilities than our enrollment really uh, supports in terms of utilization with uh, facilities operating at less than 50 percent capacity. And so those two facilities that are being discussed are Alma Red Wine and Horseshoe Drive. While Horseshoe Drive is not below capacity, uh, for those that are familiar with our school system, Horseshoe Drive sits uh, between two other schools that are just three and a half miles apart from each other. And so um, again, this is just a proposal that the board is considering and, um, and they'll be discussing it tomorrow night. So this plan, um, you know, when you came on the show last time, we were talking about the different calendar options right, uh, that right. everyone could vote on. And I know you have done surveys for calendar options mm -hmm. and even things like school uniforms. Right. Uh, why isn't something like this included in a survey asking for input and, mm -hmm. and maybe having a discussion about it before voting on it? Right. Well, f first of all, so tomorrow night is a public meeting for discussion. So that, that's the whole point. It, something has to get put on the agenda in order for it to be discussed like that. Uh, but secondly, I'll say that uh, Dr. Chapman, our board president, uh, has released today a potential substitute motion that the board would have to consider uh, that would, in fact, kind of slow things down and say, look, let's let's establish a uh, advisory council, a, a better facilities advisory council that's made up of parents, administrators, other stakeholders that would, in fact, just do that and then uh, take it a little bit slower and listen to the feedback from those folks and then those folks would report back to the school board a comprehensive collaborative plan to address some of these needs. Okay. <coughs> now, um, you know, the, so two of those schools would be closed, right? <coughs> Alma Red Wine, Horseshoe Elementary. Over time, yes. Over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those students would go where? Um, the, uh, the way the proposal is currently written, the students who are currently at Alma Red Wine would be split between Acadian Elementary and Martin Park Elementary School. The students that are currently at Horseshoe Drive would be split between Martin Park Elementary and Cherokee Elementary. So about how many students uh, does that, those just elementary <coughs> that we're talking about right here from That's those right. two schools? So there's only 225 students enrolled at um, uh, Alma Red Wine, which is about 50% capacity, just under 50% capacity. Thank you. And um, there are just over 300 at um, Horseshoe Drive Elementary. And so those uh, students would be split between the other two schools. Okay. What do, uh, how do those schools uh, feel about this plan of shutting down and, uh, you know, just, just spreading them out to other schools? Yeah, change is hard. You know, change is always hard. And so we're listening to the feedback from folks. Obviously, it's been out for five or six days now, so we've gotten lots of feedback <laughs> yeah. on it. And I think Dr. Chapman's motion, uh, his substitute motion that he plans to introduce really speaks to the majority of the concerns that people have. Uh, you know, I think as, as we continue to move forward, I, I was shared uh, with folks last week that when you look at the gains that we've made as a public school system over the last three and a half years, you know, even in the midst of COVID, you know, no schools or, excuse me, not dropping our district performance score in the midst of COVID, 75% of our schools growing last year, which, you know, that's tremendous success. 
uh, it's hard to separate the academic gains from the very tough decisions that our board has made operationally. You know, two years ago when we uh, made the decision to close three elementary campuses and do the, do the same thing, you know, we repopulated two of those sites with um, Head Start and completely closed another one. What it does is it allows us to have a, lo a, a much more efficient and effective operational uh, process that when you talk about our operational strategic plan, on our academic strategic plan, we talk about, you know, our road to 90. We want to be one of the top 15 districts in the state of Louisiana. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to do some things differently than we've ever done. We can keep doing what we've always done, but we're not going to get, you know, too many different results. Uh, when we make better decisions on our operational plan, that's the better facilities, better programs, better pay. It allows us to create more opportunities for our students and for our employees to be able to do all of the things that we know they are capable of doing if given the opportunity. And so all of those opportunities are, are limited by the resources that we have. And so when we have so many facilities that are still underutilized, those facilities draw resources away from the, the possibility of additional programs, draw uh, uh, f resources away from having the best facilities available for our students and for our employees. You know, we're really excited about the $100 million bond that got passed in District 62. And over the next few years, we're going to see a lot of tremendous improvements to our campuses. But the truth of the matter is we still only collect so many resources, so much money for the maintain maintenance of these buildings. So if we're still spreading the maintenance of those funds out across so many schools, what's going to happen five years from now? You know, we're going to be similar situation five years from now with whether or not we're able to keep these upgrades up. Right, exactly. And that's why when, you know, the bond was being introduced to the public, um, for the option to vote and pass this bond to go to different schools. Uh, there was money allocated to each school mm -hmm. for specific projects. Um, why wasn't this plan included mm -hmm. in that bond and then just kind of reintroduced to us after the bond was passed? Because yeah. this would allocate those funds. <clears throat> Right, reallocates some for the individual schools. But so the, the bond was a year ago, a little over a year ago. And so this plan was not in anybody's pocket, you know, a year ago. So this is new. Every year we reevaluate everything that we're doing uh, from an operational stance and from an academic stance to make sure that we continue to show growth. And so I do want to make sure everybody who's a District 62 taxpayer understand that the bond call was for the improvement of or uh, additional construction for facilities within taxing District 62. Right. All of those funds are still staying in District 62. Um, if the board approves this proposal, some combination of this proposal, those funds will still stay in District 62. Just maybe some of it would be redirected to schools following the children, which the money's for the children, right? The money is to follow uh, where the children are to be able to provide the best opportunities for them. And so if this is passed, let's say, um, then any future funds mm -hmm. within the bond 62 would still be able to be allocated, Absolutely. reallocated. Yep. And moved around for within district 62 within districts mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. okay okay well um so what do you say to the you know parents we've heard a lot from <coughs> parents teachers right. staff um about how many teachers and staff members are we looking at who uh will be without a job yeah. potentially yeah it's really very few you know i know the way the proposal was written you know we try to be very factful and, and truthful when we put stuff out there and there's always a possibility when you merge campuses that there's going to be um you know different positions that are no longer needed uh because of the the way you relocate however when it comes to the instructional staff you know as i was sharing with some other folks you know on on you know three campuses coming together you may have five uh, PE teachers well when you combine those you may not need five PE teachers you may just need three but you you need two uh, additional teachers for art or for stem or robotics or stuff like that so um, it just may look a little different but but it, you know it's part of the growth process so if you had a parent um, who doesn't have a kid enrolled in school yet but mm -hmm. maybe looking at a uh, private school versus mm -hmm. public school what are some arguments you would make to uh, recommend the Rapids mm -hmm. Parish Public School System to parents looking for a place to send their child? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that I'm having to contend with uh, throughout this process is the way in which some of this information got communicated out. And uh, when, when you have a system or leadership that's built on trust and built on being better together and you feel like that has been defiled, th there's a lot of work that has to be done to correct that. And so, uh, which is why we're having tons of conversations and meetings uh, over the next few days to, to kind of correct some of that. 
Uh, I believe that Rapid Parish Public Schools offer uh, the, the greatest opportunity for students and, and the K-12, uh, the concept of a K-12 academic and performing arts magnet uh, school or program is a great opportunity for those folks. And as we continue to build this thing together, getting parent and administrator uh, input and feedback, people are going to be able to see that um, over time. Okay, great. And, uh, you know, my four kids go to private school now, but I have one who is enrolled in public school so far for next year going to high school. Uh, and how many kids do you have enrolled? Uh, we All of my kids are homeschooled, so oh. everybody, everybody knows that. That's not news. Okay. And uh, that doesn't have any bearing on, on the decisions that we make in terms of what's best for our students in Rapids Parish Public Schools. And what would you recommend for parents, teachers, staff members who maybe have concerns that they want to reach you about? Uh, my email is always wide open, jeff.powell at rpsb.us. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Jeff. We appreciate the update. Thanks. We'll be right back with more Good Day Sunlight right after this break.